Welcome to Lessons in Leadership, Steve Adubato. Mary Gamba is in the house, as always, our executive producer, co-anchor. Mary, we uh, have a new guest we've never had on before in Lessons in Leadership. Please do the introduction. I would love to. And thank you, uh, first and foremost, for joining us, Laura Fredericks. She is the CEO and co-founder of The Ask. And I want to also say uh, I thank Glenn Friedman for making The Ask uh, in order to have you on our show and joining us today. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. And there's a story with Glenn, but we can get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> there's, that's great. Well, Laura, The Ask is not just a name that's tied to several of your books. You've written six. There's a new one coming up. But what is the concept, the theme behind The Ask? The theme behind The Ask is people really struggle personally and professionally to ask for things that they want. So I saw this a matter of years ago. So I said, when I see a problem, let's create organization structure and focus. So it's your, it's your playbook. There's total structure to this. No matter what you want, whether it's an investment, you want something personal, you want something in the future, there's one ask to do and everybody relaxes, goes forward and gets exactly what you want. It's, it's, a, it's more than just blurting things out. There's a whole process to it. Um, I've been teaching this for quite so long. And um, I think um, people like your, your listeners and your audience would love to hear, I have a five-step process to it and you'll get exactly what you want. Why do you believe it's so difficult for so many people to simply quote, ask? Okay, so I, I ask this all the time and people think it's two things. Um, don't wanna hear no and uh, don't wanna be rejected. Okay, so so who doesn't want no? Yes, want I, I mean, that's, that's what I'm right? thinking. <laughs> Tip of the head. But, but like Mary, I'm gonna say, from the age of two, what was the first word you ever heard? So is it brand new? Is it terrible? No. Um, I've been testing this and, and it's very interesting. The number one reason, and since we're in lessons in leadership, the number one reason people in a leadership role as well do not ask is they're afraid they'll hear a response that they won't know what to say. It's kind of like, I don't ever want to be surprised. I don't want to appear to be unknowledgeable. I do not want to appear like I don't know what to say to your response. And that is the number one reason people don't ask. But you know what, Mary, you and I have talked about this so often that we're obsessed about the art of asking questions and the goal is to get other people talking. And some of our clients in our coaching have said, well, wait a minute, if 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 someone asks me something that I don't know the answer to, as, as Laura's talking about, what do I do? And I'm thinking, so if you don't know the answer, why don't you just have a conversation to try to find out more? Mary, I'm on again. Uh, Mary, jump back in because I know you want to go in a different direction. Yeah, no, but I, I just want to piggyback on that for a second, though. Why why do people go right to that, though, Laura? Like when they're really unsure, it, why is it so hard to just say, I don't know, but I'm going to find out? Why because is that so hard? Most people, when they make an ask, have thought about this a long time, right? Usually if it's something uh, very, very important, job related, especially mm -hmm. right now, people looking for another job, a, ro a raise, a promotion, a network opportunity, open the door, on, on. There's a lot of emotions that come flooding through and they start th talking about, well, if someone asks me, you know, I, I don't know what I would say. So how do I respond back? They play it out in their head. And that's one of the th things that really, really prevents the ask is you're doing it here, not here. And like Steve said, and you're absolutely right. The best thing you could do is not know because you could say, Steve, excellent question. Let's, let's talk about that a little. And now it's a conversation, not a confrontation. Yeah. And I want to have one quick follow-up. How obviously we talk about leadership all the time, coaching and mentoring the team, your team, how can you use the same concepts of the ask to get the most out of your team? Love to hear that because I know I can learn a lot. Well, I've been doing this for 30 years and I can tell you, I've managed a staff of one and I've managed a staff of 45 on five different campuses. When you be, and, and, and the thing I'm, is the superior listener with presence, the superior listener with presence, you can bring out the best of your team and then you ask good questions, and that's how you go forward. You, mm, wait, uh, you have me thinking a lot, Laura, but it also reminds me of something that I've said before on Lessons in Leadership. Think about the ask for a second. Mary, how many years, and you know where I'm going, I how many do. years would you ask at the end of the year, and now we're taping this at the end of 2022, so Mary and I have been together since, I believe, 2000. Mm -hmm. 
first X number of years, say how many years, when you asked for a raise, you would have all kinds of physiological, psychological, emotional reactions that were not great. And I felt bad for you, but not that much because you weren't that good a negotiator then. Oh yeah, you and, loved watching me squirm. I know you did. <laughs> but now it's very different. I've talked about this before. Mary, do you remember that? Oh, of course. It, it, and it, it would just, Laura, my neck would get red. My palms would get sweaty. My mouth would get dry. And I have to say, and I'm curious to hear, you know, I know you said that there's five steps and obviously, you know, we have a limit to the amount of time that we have here today. But does one of those steps have anything to do with confidence? Because I know with me, confidence was key and confidence in knowing that I'm betting on myself. I know that I'm worth it. <laughs> and now I don't get read, read at all. And I'm totally confident to ask for that big fat raise at the end of the year. It's great. I and get I can... read. I get read. <laughs> From her <laughs> reaction. Get read. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Laura. No, I was going to say, Mary, it's great. Well, the first, it's Laura's laws. The first law is know exactly what you want with numbers and dates. So when you're going to talk to Steve the next time for a raise, instead of saying, I want a raise, which I would say, I want a $10,000 raise that will begin January 1st, 2023. Can we talk about it? That is an ask for a raise. Okay. Got it. Specific amount, specific date. That's number one. Number two. I wish we it are, were that number because I know it's going to be higher, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> we are going to write 15 things down. Steve is going to say to that. I can't. The budget's taken up and all of it. And then we'll write down, write down what we're going to say to each. Once you have those two, the third law is deliver with confidence. If you notice, I stand up. I stand up all the time when I talk. Voice goes up body language perfect. That's where the confidence comes in. When you do law one, number one, law number two, then you're in the zone. There's no way you can't feel like this is coming to you. I, yeah. I feel empowered already, Steve. I think we need to pause <laughs> the show. I'm going to make my ask and then we'll come back and continue the show. <laughs> Please don't, don't do it. <laughs> I'm with her. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what's so interesting about it is, Laura, I have seen, and we've talked about this before, I've seen Mary grow in confidence for a lot of reasons, and it does have to do with the ask. It's almost not even an ask. At this point, it's not an ask. It's, listen, it's almost like this is the meta META communication. You and I both know, Steve, that you could function without me, but not very well. And the organization is a lot better off with me in charge, which is what she is. The point I'm making is there's a lot of unstated part of the conversation because she's so confident of that. Mary, am I overanalyzing this? No, not at all. But again, you know, as Laura was saying, I, I truly believe it takes a long time to get here. It and does. that comes with experience. It comes with falling down, picking myself up and frankly, getting that coaching mentorship from you, Steve, of listen, you know, put your big girl pants on and, and, you know, dust yourself off. And I mean, I can't tell you the last time I cried, I used to be a crier too, Laura. <laughs> I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. It's okay. I, I don't, I don't do that anymore. And, but you want to know what it, it, it has helped me in life. It's helped me with right. my kids. It's helped me when, you know, the, you know, what hits the fan just to step back, pause and realize, Hey, if I keep a level head, whether it's asking for a raise, asking for help, it will make everything that much easier. You know, it's um, when you think about it, there's a lot of work that I do to get behind why you can't do it, especially when it comes to money. And so before you can even ask for a raise, we go into what are your money blockers? What is preventing you from asking from a numerical amount? Because that's a lot of reasons why people don't ask for the dollar amount. They just say, want to raise and take their chances. It's not Here's an ask. So. That's not yeah. the number I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Oh, we've been Precisely. there too, Steve. Yeah, Laura, we've been there too. Precisely. Where we went in saying, they're going to be so psyched and pumped. We're giving them this raise. And they're like, oh, I, I, I thought I was going to get more. And I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Specific Look, numbers are your friends. <laughs> yes. You've got to say that. So the ask has to be specific, specific amount. Form. Specific amount, specific time. When do you want it? Steve, you could talk to Mary, say, $10,000, we're in 2024. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serious. I don't love don't this. laugh. It goes that way. It goes that wow. way. And then you walk by, you're on stun gun because you're like, you didn't see that one coming. And you're kind of like, well, I got it. No, I didn't really get it. And lose, lose. This is spectacular. I'm telling you, it's your playbook. It's your playbook for life. It's uh -huh. for life. I'm curious about this. Um, I know I've be 
I'm obsessed with communication and leadership for a million reasons, uh, mostly because I was around good and not so good leadership, great, powerful communication, which was also nasty and abusive and a million other things. And I became a student of it and make a million mistakes along the way, as everyone I work with knows. When did you become so interested, bordering on a healthy obsession with the coaching and mentoring you're doing around asking and related topics? Go ahead. As a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. I work for the Attorney General's office in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. And I realized that I was winning a lot of cases on cross-examination because I asked good questions. And then I got involved with philanthropy on the Bar Association hired me to run their whole foundation. And people weren't asking for money. They were, they were Steve, taking people out for hours, Mary, calling them up, having play dates with your kids, thinking time, luck, and chance would produce money. And it never did. And I said, what is going on here? So the light bulb went on. And so I was doing that. And I said, whoa, as a lawyer and as a journalist, I love organization structure and focus. And that's why I started writing about it, putting in the methods, putting in the, putting in the coaches, putting in the steps, follow it, do this. Here's the example. I've learned all the wrong way. Believe me, I asked all the wrong way. And so we correct it and we have structure for you to go. Who doesn't like structure? Who doesn't like structure, right? Even little kids cry for structure. They okay? need it even if they don't think they need it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And people who ask, who don't think they, or they think they're really good askers, they need this too. You know, it's so interesting. You talked about Glenn Freeman, our longtime friend over at Prager Metis. <laughs> I remember when I first met Glenn and we started brainstorming and, and we do leadership and communication coaching at Prager Metis. They're one of our uh, sponsors and supporters of Lessons in Leadership. There was an ask. I don't even remember it, but there was an ask. It was sp specific and precise. Glenn could have said no, and out Lori Roth, uh, who's leading the organization as well, uh, a CEO, yes or no, or something in between. But you've got to say what it is. Mm -hmm. You do. And okay. it's interesting because uh, Glenn and I know each other. We're from Richfield, New Jersey. I am a Jersey girl, by the way. And Bergen, um, County. Bergen County. And we lifeguarded together. We went to high school together. And I was writing all this stuff, taking on some articles in the New York Times where there, it was an article here to help. Here's how you ask for help. And it was all wrong. It was always give a person the out. Who does this? Okay. Always apologize. I went nuts. Right. So Glenn writes to me and says, do you want to come and talk to our partners? Because we need some help getting paid, having an increase in our fees and asking for a referral. So Glenn and I got together, it was just a couple of weeks ago down in Atlantic City, and just because of your stature, just because of your title, just because of your age, there's a lot to learn here. And I okay. learn just as much when I'm doing it with them. So uh, Laura Fredericks is the CEO and founder of The Ask, and I want to thank our good friend Glenn Friedman for making the recommendation. And Laura, we thank you, and we ask you to come back in the future, okay? Anytime, anytime. Yeah. And it was enjoyable. You both are great. You're doing great work. I've, I've listened to a lot of what you've done yeah, and really you. outstanding. I'm sorry. Did you say that I do? Oh, I said we do great work. I'm we, sorry. I, I we. we. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a team. It takes a village. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, Inc., Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Welcome back, Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba, and we're honored to be joined by Laura Zaleski, who is the author and owner and founder of Funny Farm Rescue and Sanctuary. Is it, it, do you admit that that's your book, Lori? 
That is my book indeed, yes. And who do you have with you? This is Puppy. And Mary said, is that a koala or a dog? <laughs> and this is in fact a dog, but uh, he looks like a koala. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And Mary, Mary, this was your idea. This is my idea. On, so I, I I'm going to give a quick story. So Lori, um, I have had a dream of owning a dog rescue my entire life. So Steve knows I'm on the five-year plan of finishing. Steve and I have worked together for 22 years. And my next phase of my life, I'm going to be in dog rescue and animal rescue. So my sister sent me your book a couple of months ago. And I literally read the entire thing on a plane ride. I was crying my eyes out. So you have inspired me and so many. And I would love for you to share for all our viewers who don't know who you are, what you do, where you do it. Tell us what the Funny Farm is, the sanctuary. Uh, what is it and where is it? So the Funny Farm is one of the largest sanctuaries in the Northeast. We have over 600 rescue animals. It is free to get in. We are open two days a week, Tuesdays and Sundays. Every single animal is a rescue. We have pigs, horses, goats, pigs. Uh, I said pigs, ducks, chickens, geese, alpacas, donkeys, dogs, cats, a skunk. So it's it runs the gamut of what we have, emus. So every single one needed a home where they were either going to be euthanized or they are disabled, unwanted, neglected, abused. So some of the really sad stories, but the funny farm, we're the funny farm. We concentrate on where they are going and not where they came from. And we let, uh, we, we teach a kindness program uh, through the animals that if all these different species can get along, so can you. So as I said, it's free to get in. The only thing you must do is sign a waiver because they are loose. <laughs> I love it. Mary, isn't that great how all the animals at Lori's funny farm get along as long as uh, they yeah. don't talk? as long as they don't talk politics. Exactly, it's amazing how that happens. And Lori, I, I would be remiss not uh, sharing, if you can share a little bit about your mom. She seemed like such an inspiration. You talked about her in the book. Please mm -hmm. share about your mom, because really I truly believe that you would not be where you are today if it weren't for her. Oh, absolutely. So if it weren't for my mom, I would never have this farm. I always said my mom was going to be a nun and then married the devil, my father. We took off and he was very abusive. We moved into a little, shack in the woods. And then she started working at uh, animal shelter and started bringing home all these animals. So as a young girl, I always promised her I would buy her this uh, a farm of her own. And in my late 20s, she was diagnosed with cancer. So my dreams, her dream sped up because I tried to buy this for her. And then next thing you know, she passed away right before I made settlement. So I became an instant... I became an instant. Uh, <laughs> I love it. All right, here's the funny farm at its best. All right, go outside now. <laughs> Clearly, we are taping live with no editing. But <laughs> go ahead, pick it up, Lori. I have 11 dogs, 25 cats, a cockatoo, and two chickens in the house presently. They do all live together. Um, outside, there's uh, over 600. So it is crazy, but crazy good, I say. Um, Your but mom they, would be proud of you, would she not? Yeah. So this was, I never even think, I don't even know if she could dream it this big. It started out <laughs> 35 and I was my mother's daughter and couldn't say no and just kept taking in animals. So it's been, and I have a full-time job. So this is not my real, no, I'm a graphic designer and photographer. I work for the FAA and I'm a private pilot, but this is my passion, the animals. Uh, uh, so by the way, Mary, that makes it clear to you that you can run a dog rescue and still run two companies that we're involved in. That as Mary, long as you're okay with the barking and the shenanigans going on in the background when we're in our meetings. Oh my God, I love that puppy so much. <laughs> Mary, I, this is, I, it's so funny, Lori, this is obviously your passion. It's Mary's. Oh Mary, my gosh. I, I've she is, never seen your face like this before. I, I am seriously glowing. My sister texted me. She's like, did you have on Lori yet? Did you have on Lori yet? <laughs> and it's just so funny. My, my cousin and I have talked about for the longest time. We actually just set up a Zoom meeting. There's a woman in South Africa who runs a dog rescue. It's a mobile dog rescue unit. And, you know, we reached out and the same thing. We just had somebody on talking about the ask and we put out the ask to this woman in South Africa and said, would you be willing to talk with us? We're looking to do a comparable thing here in the States. 
And sure enough, she responded. And next week we're talking to her and, and it's all about making these connections. Right. And, and my kids are now, I had my own funny farm with my two kids. Now they're <laughs> adults, almost young adults. So uh, I do want to segue into one question though, that I really need to know. You've had all of these animals on your farm and you've just, you know, come into contact is there one that really stands out to you that really, we obviously we're here talking about leadership that really just showed you that animals can be leaders. Animals can teach us to be leaders as well. So I have my large German shepherd. He was the one who was just barking. He's usually silent, but when mom goes on, he has mega esophagus and he was supposed to live six months and he is four years old. His name is Tucker. So he backs into a chair, sits up and has to have the food, liquid food go down into his stomach or he would starve to death. And this dog is like a human. Anywhere I go, he follows me. He is now a service dog. He doesn't have, he's unleashed trained, meaning you can go anywhere and he just sits right by my hip. He has kids climb on him like a horse. He's oh amazing. Gosh. When you're a human, you spend that much time with an animal that he has to eat every three hours. Uh, blended food, like a doggy milkshake. And then he has Ooh. to sit up for at least 10 minutes and you sit with him. You, you just develop a little bit closer bond than, you know, the, the average animal that you have. So I, I need, I need to ask this. I want to ask, I need to ask it two things. Number one, how do you make money at this? Do you, because I I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, we have a not for profit and a for, this is our for profit operation, but we have a not for profit production company and we have to raise money and you have to have a tight budget and economics matter. Right. Is that not the case at the funny farm? So when it started, so I have, I'm entrepreneurial as well. I have my own business. Uh, I'm a woman owned company. And like I said, I have a graphic design and photography company. I work for government contracting uh, for the federal aviation administration and selective service. And so that was going to be my, that has been my bread and butter and still is. And that's what supported the animals up to about $3,000 a month. When it got to more than $3,000 a month, I'm like, what am I going to do? So I didn't become a nonprofit right away. I just was just like my mother bringing in animals that needed help. And I just was doing it out of my own pocket. So the only reason I became a 501c3 was to get a tax break on my feed. And that's important because a lot of people think, oh, you did it to make, I, I was doing it just to survive and to make my uh, you know, bills a little bit less. So that's how the whole thing began. And now we are 100% donation based. And- Put up the website so people oh, yeah. can- Oh yeah, it's funnyfarmrescue.org. So all one word, funnyfarmrescue.org since we are a nonprofit. Um, we do a live video every Sunday. So if you can't get here, we, people, we have people from South Africa, from the UK watching, and we walk around and it's amazing to most people because they are loose. The animals are just around and you'll have an emu come up to you or, you know, an alpaca. Hey, Mary, Steve, I, I think we have to have a road trip in the next couple of weeks. I do too. I think we should have <laughs> Steve and Mary. Well, here. Steve, I don't know if Steve will be there, but I'll be there, Lori. Steve, we'll lend you a pair of boots because I bet you don't own a pair. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, You're just very got, tidy. That's all. Never mind. I, I, so I got a pair of boots that I purchased in Florence. My wife and I were in Florence, but I don't think they're the kind of boots you're talking about. So... I need to say this because I disclose certain relationships and and um, if we're doing business with someone and doing leadership development and they're they're on the show, I always disclose that. But I need to disclose this. And I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. We have two dogs, Pete and it was Vinny and Vinny passed away. And and then we got Champ um, and they're we'll put it in post-production. I tolerate them. I don't love them so much. I love my wife and I love my daughter, our daughter very much, and they love them. And because I love my wife and daughter, I'm, I'm pretty good with the dogs, but not great. Translation, do you believe there are certain people, I don't even want to say dog people, but just love, love, love animals and others. And I know I'm not alone. And this isn't a popular thing to say. It's worse than talking about the 2024 election. It's more dangerous. But that just... I don't connect with animals in the same way others do. Is something wrong with me? No, nothing's wrong with you. I just think that some people do connect. Like I connect more with animals than I do people most times. I love really? people, but animals and I are just, you know, we get each other. But there are some people, no matter what, I, I was at an event today and there were some people that would not pet a chicken. Adults, I'm like, the chicken's not going to do anything to you. They would not pet a chicken no matter what I did. I said, I promise you. Her name's Adele, the diva chicken, and she lives in the house. So I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you, what? What did she just say? Adele the Adele, diva Adele, chicken? Adele, Adele. 
Mary, Mary, yeah. you these pets have personalities, Mary. Oh my God. Oh, totally. Yes. Oh my God. There's the Dell. That's a Dell. So this is a Dell, the diva chicken. Go ahead. Oh, you go too close here. So that is her. She she uh, is pretty old. We don't know how old she exactly is, but she you can see she just hangs out. Her nails are painted. <laughs> she can't. That see is her. amazing. And she sits. She can sit on top of the dog. She sits with them when they're in bed. Um, she doesn't lay eggs anymore because she's elderly. So she was surrendered. A lot of them become soup. So all of the chickens here, a lot of them do not lay. Wow. Eggs. They're just kind of pets. But she lives in my house. She wears a diaper. However, oh my gosh. Yeah, she doesn't have it on because we were just changing it out for, for now, but she didn't know she Hey, was for television out. purposes, she wants to be uh, in her natural state. Oh yeah. <laughs> she is. Mary, <laughs> let's make sure, Mary, let's make sure we air. I know we're taping for lessons in leadership. Let's let's uh, contribute this to our partners over at the Caucus Educational Corporation. Let's air this on one-on-one -on -one because we yeah. need to get the largest possible audience for this. And I was just going to say, again, we want people to donate to your cause for sure. Oh, there's Adele's book. Own book too. This is a children's book. We're self-published. Um, the social media guy and I wrote this book for Adele, the diva chicken. It's all true stories, real photographs, but it teaches. She thinks she is a human or a dog or a cat. She does not think she is a chicken. And we say, why label ourselves? Let's just be the best you that you can be. And it's all about anti-bullying and being kind to one another. Uh, Mary, I've been doing this for more than a few years, as you well know. Um, Lori is about the most interesting person we've had Thank you. in a really long time. And, <laughs> I and told you, Steve. I take but that I as a thank compliment, Lord. I think, Steve. It's great. It, it, no, it is. It's, I don't know if the camera that's called The Funny Farm. And Mary, you're not only a great leader, but a great executive producer. <laughs> and also, thank your sister as well. Yeah, this is no, awesome. thank you. Laura, Laura, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Really well done. Wish you and all of your uh, family at the Funny Farm the best. Thank you, Steve. And I'm still looking forward for you both to come and visit. Oh, I'll definitely be there. And if I can get Steve down, I don't know. <laughs> okay, you let me know uh, any day. I'll be there. It. I don't know about that. Mary and I will be back after this, promise. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Got about a minute and a half left. Mary, how much do you enjoy not just being the executive producer of this series, but also finding people like Lori and bringing her on? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited. As you know, we've talked about my passion for animal rescue on this program for so long. So to me, that was almost the equivalent of meeting like the president of the United States. I mean, Lori is just so passionate about what she does. Her book is amazing. If anyone is out there watching, pick it up. It is a worthwhile read. It talks about accepting others. And it's just, it's so inspirational in a time that we need something like this from our leaders. What the, does it really connect directly to leadership in your view? It really does. Yes. And, and Lori talked about it. She has over 600 animals, so many different breeds. They're all getting along. She's got emus and chickens and lambs and dogs and ducks and you name it. And they're all just getting along with one another. They don't know that one's a pig. Hey, I'm a pig. You're a horse. Hey, let's get along. So there is a lesson there for everyone. Instead of embracing and looking at our differences, let's take a look and find the ways that we are so similar. I was also, as we get out of here, I want to say this. The fact that Lori has a full-time job and does all these things and still runs the Funny Farm makes it clear to me that Mary can continue to be the executive producer of this series, co-anchor it, and run our other company, the Caucus Education <laughs> Corporation. And in her part time, she can have any animal rescue or funny farm she wants, as long as she sticks with me. That's it, Mary. <laughs> That's for Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba, together for life. Catch See you next time. time. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis. Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, Inc., Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856.
This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.